Hey everybody, welcome to Well on Cow Live. We got a very special guest today, the Cows. Welcome, Oompaville, big hot YouTuber. Oh yeah, uh, right now. Um, <laughs> you don't do my taste. I'll give you that. Yeah, but, I actually um, really like. You are his doing taste. quite well uh, as far as commentary. I, I call you nice guy commentary. Okay. Do you think that's fair? Nice guy commentary. I I feel like uh, I feel like an asshole, but I, if you call me nice guy commentary, I'll take that. I guess. I always felt well, like he reminds me of like early Ethan Klein back when like Ethan Klein would do commentary, but Ethan would always make himself the butt of the joke. Um, and I'll tell you what turned me on to you, Oompa, was uh, you did a video where you put on a bunch of weights to simulate what it was like to be a morbidly obese person. Mm -hmm. And I, obviously I'm going to be fascinated by that. Um, and your reaction to that was fairly empathetic right like i mm -hmm. mean you took you took a piss a little bit too right which is the, your job uh but i just thought i was like man that seems like somebody who kind of gets it a little bit that it kind of sucks to exercise when you're fat all right so how do i gain weight really quick i can't eat a lot i'm not going to eat a lot because i'm not a um piglet all right so we bought a bunch of weight so i know what it's like to be a person of size this is how i'm going to be gaining 300 pounds in a short period of time <laughs> This is the only relief I find. Dude, this makes sense. <laughs> this makes sense. Yeah. This, all the teal shit, it all makes sense. No wonder they're so fucking lazy. This is awesome. I don't know. And then you do you, a you, lot of videos you know, about you know what, You know people. what it means also, though? You should probably get some weights and hit the gym, too. How ironic would that be? <laughs> You're like, not wrong. But well, you hold, also hold up, like, hold up. How, how many weights did he put on? I, ha I think it was 180 pounds. That's a little too much. It was a lot. It, it was a lot. I jumped in the pool with it. Um, oh, wow. It was, it was pretty, it was like on my wrist and, and I had like a big thing on my back and stuff. It, it, was, a, it was a lot. I like to live on the edge. <laughs> As he stands. Oh, oh sh Do you work, Do out, I work normal? out normally? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. cause, cause like I, my whole thought process, cause I, I challenge people to do this. I used to do a thing called walking 365 and I challenge people to take about 70 pounds because that was that's what i figured what my body's not accustomed to because like when you're fat like me you also have the the structure the frame and the muscle to help mm -hmm. carry a lot of the extra weight but there's still a little bit more that you're not used to right, right. and i always thought about 70 pounds is the proper way to gauge what it would be like to be an overly weight obese person you screwed it up okay. Uncle Phil. No, I, yeah. I'm just saying because, because like yeah. I had somebody actually do it and like walk around the track and walk two miles, and you realize that sitting down you feel like a normal human being. Anything mm -hmm. else you feel like you're dead. Hence yeah. why you sit around all the time. Yeah, I mean, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It is it is violently unpleasant to stand up at this weight. I yeah. think Jordy, I yeah, imagine. you you can ex uh, like uh, Jordy. I'm sure you can relate. But at the end of the day, like, I have a disability where my L3, my L4, and my L5 have fused together for years of like compressing together. Right? Hold so up. So that in itself use, is use the very term, Use the term fused. Did you get them medically fused together, or did they no, just no, no. naturally just get they, so f compressed that they're like, hey, that we're they've one grown thing. together? Yeah, they're grown together. Yeah, uh, yeah. so and like, not like fully. Just so that like means partially. you're going to be crippled at some point in your life. Yeah, yeah, I'm pretty much crippled now. No, 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 no. Uh, I mean, literally crippled. Like, you're going to be like, he's fucking walking around with the goddamn walker. What are you talking yeah, about? No, I'm, I'm talking about hitting this motherfucker. He's going to be like butterbean in this motherfucker. He's going to be like, he practically is. Dude, have you what seen? What are you talking about? Have you seen what? <laughs> Have you seen what DDP did for Dutter, Gutter, Butterbean? No. Have you guys seen that video? You mean, you mean Diamond oh Dallas God. Page? Yeah. You said EDP. Yeah, Diamond Dallas Page, like, basically, once again, saved somebody's life. This is a guy who, of course, came into my life and tried to save my life, and even he couldn't save mine. But, <laughs> <laughs> but he, he, I mean, he lifted Butterbean back up. Butterbean looks great, and he okay. looks like he's in way less pain. Like you, like you said, he's going to be crippled for the rest of his life to some degree. But he's not like dying the way he was. Before yeah, he I, I want to see more of that video than like, okay, we've strengthened his core enough that he can stand up for short periods of time, right? Because yeah. like when you when your back gets to the point where like the spines are fused like that, you don't fix it. There's no real fix for it. Like you're pretty much f yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm I'm looking forward to Boogie really being f up in a few years. Yeah, that's what I was saying. Like this dude's <laughs> gonna be a legit f 
cripple. Like, he, I mean, it's like, like I told. He is legit. Like, he's not. He's there now. I mean, like. What's your I'm blood pressure at? I, I heard, uh, I saw a clip the other day. I haven't seen a lot of this this pod. I know I know of it, right? Uh, <laughs> I but I saw you. I'll you. Dude, you I'll were take screaming. it right now. You were screaming yeah. and your blood pressure was like 190 over 120. The emergency room right now. Okay. I should be in the emergency room right now. Then stop, stop yelling. yelling. No, no, seriously, calm down. Like no, you could I really kill that. yourself right now. <laughs> 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 Listen, let me do it. Can blood pressure so I should be in the emergency room. Boogie, boogie. Yeah, and my doctor. Like, ah! This that podcast might have saved my life, um, because I I contacted my doctor and I told him, and I'm like, dude, what do we do? He's like, doubled my losartan, so my numbers have been better since then. Let's get a reading. I'm gonna be quiet while we take it this time because I know that's important. You guys talk you to the guests. I love this like blood pressure reading. I, 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 I am molasses? least overweight. You have like molasses blood? I have polycythemia vera, polycythemia. which causes me to have like a really high red blood, blood cell count. Mm. And so that's like damaging organs and kidneys and stuff like that right now. Just and it makes it really hard on the heart to pump everything through. I actually have worse blood. I, I'm the skinniest guy in the show and the worst blood pressure. I'm probably yeah, going to go for Boogie, do you lie to your funny? doctor? No, probably. never. I mean, like, like, why does he just like, okay, well, I didn't know your numbers was this bad. Let me double your medicine. Like, how does that happen? We we went in. We we put me on Lasartan. He didn't know the numbers were that bad. They take him in the office, and sometimes they're a little bit high uh, when we're in the office. Yeah, they're not great today. They're still not great today. One eighty nine over. I don't 100. think you got the proper well, relationship with your doctor. <laughs> maybe you might. Uh, like, yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah, I maybe play Call of Duty course. with my doctor. <laughs> I we have this app uh, called My Mercy, and I could write him on there and tell him what's going on. And uh, so I told him, like, hey, man, I took my blood pressure consistently over the last three days. It's the same numbers we were getting in the office. What should we do? It's like, well, let's give you let's give you more. We'll start. What's your blood pressure? Yeah. Uh, 120 over 80. <laughs> oh, really? Believe it or not. Lucky yeah. guy. Yeah. yeah. I'm sure it has nothing to do with going to the gym and taking care of yourself. <laughs> because as, no, I just think <laughs> I was lucky. As we all know, yeah, uh, streaming and YouTube creation is way harder than a real job according to yes, a lot is. of youtubers lately Dude, so look at me you're under Fuck tremendous you. stress aren't you i, I can't oh, imagine yeah it's very hard i you get are. anxiety honestly. you get anxiety what? yeah i, I get bad anxiety. anxiety because like you're 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 basically the sole purpose you're the sole creator of like your future and like if you don't have a good idea and you're working towards mm -hmm. nothing it makes me super anxious jordy you get anxious when the line is long at wendy's Come on, the, 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 come, come on, on boy. That's, that's a terrible joke because the line could be just you. It's and you still got a thirty true. minute wait. <laughs> it's still true. Well, they, you know they got that they got that new surge pricing at Wendy's, right? Like you know, if the line's long, you're gonna pay twice as much for the burger. You know, you start. You, have you guys not heard about this? Wendy's made the decision. I I keep up with all the fast food news, even though I'm more of a Chick Fil A guy these days. Boogie, yeah. you eat Very bougie. Arby's. That's, that Buffalo slider suck. God, that Buffalo got Slider's that. a dollar, dude. I'm on a budget, okay? I can oh feed my me, God. my roommate, and my girlfriend for, for five dollars. Five dollars, you get that. Shit on like the I app, even okay? went got this app. I'm like, oh man, Boogie's putting me on this. Shit. This might be fire. Nah, that shit was not fire. It's so good. Did you get the Buffalo Chicken one? That's I, the good I, I one. I did, and it tastes like Buffalo. That's snacks. the good one. All right. Well. All right. Whatever. The point that I'm making is, Wendy's came up with a pl great plan that during rush hour they were going to charge more for their food. I have no clue why they thought that was going to be good. Then they tried to spin it afterwards. They're like, actually, what we were really trying to do is charge you less when no, there was nobody in line. I've never been to a Wendy's with a line. Have you ever seen you a Wendy's with, with this, a line? Do you connect with this current conversation in Brazil? I'm know. not a big Wendy's guy. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm, just, I'm saying this, Boogie. Like, the electric company's been doing surge pricing for years and nobody gave a f so I, How about, I don't yeah, care. Well, you don't do that for my happy, cheeseburger. Isn't it cheaper there? Isn't it yeah, cheaper at happy hour? Yeah, of course. Seems like corporate Everybody greed. Wants... Yeah, yeah, that's exactly. Yeah, and of course, Wendy's didn't get away with it. Obviously, obviously. It's like, and then, like, I, Thank I don't God. know. God. Yeah. Thank God. But I mean, like, at the end of the day, I, I see your hat right now. It says Sour Boys on it. Mm -hmm. You're a merchant of candy now, too. Merchant yourself. of, you started of your own diabetes. Brand. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Is it any good? I, when are you going to send our fat ass? So I'm that's partial the real to question. it. That's the whole reason I had you on the show. If you guys, uh, it, if you send me an address, I'll, I'll hook you up. With some hell yeah, I, I I have a legitimate question. Like, do you you hire like do you like buy from like a company that makes them, or like do you have your own like manufacturing process with them? He's got little elves back there putting yeah, it all little together. tiny elves. We have uh <laughs> we have all of it, everything, the extruder, the batches, the kettles, everything we do. We so, get so you do your own manufacturing. You don't like piggyback yep. off like a bigger company. 
Yeah, it's not a uh, not white yeah. labeled. We do it all ourselves. Because I've heard it through the grapevine. That that's what Mr. Beast does, and Mr. Beast candy f sucks, man. It's garbage. But can I, I mean, ask why that's a problem? I mean, my T-shirts are made by uh, the Chinese little boys. Are your T-shirts terrible? Here, here's the problem. I, here's the problem I have with like. Depends on which one you buy. Here's the problem depends I have with like chocolate. Is like a lot of chocolate factors in a lot of child labor in Africa. Yeah, I mean, I'm not here to cheap. accuse. I'm not here to accuse Mr. Beast of, of exploiting child labor. That's not what I'm personally doing, Jordy. If that's what you want to do. No, yeah, no, I'm not saying. Here's, I'm not accusing anybody of child labor. But I know like some major companies. <laughs> have issues with child labor with coca beans mm -hmm. with chocolate candy. Yeah. I, I, would I don't just... think they have an issue with it at all. I think the kids have an issue and they're always in and whining and complaining and get to work. So what you're saying, Caleb, if, is if I eat your candy, if I find a pubic in it, it's most likely yours. Is that what I'm hearing? At 100%. <laughs> if you find a pubic hair in my candy, it is absolutely mine. Are you going to have Belle Delphine come take a bath in scalding hot sugar candy and then sell that? Is that, uh, oh, that would be considered? That yeah. would Probably sell. not. <laughs> Well, probably. Did you guys see Amber? The the FDA Amaranth? won't like that, to be honest. Probably not. Well, I mean, the FDA has apparently approved amaranth a, a couple of months back, making beer out of her vaginal yeast. You heard about that one, didn't you? Mm -hmm. Yanni. Yanni beer. Yeah, that's sold out immediately. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, you know, it can't be too far off. The FDA will, I think the FDA will. It's both. If you're a hot they, streamer. They, yeah, what, what about that chick from uh, 90 Day Fiance that farted into the jar so she's put herself in the hospital? That one was true. I know that one is true. <laughs> that was true. That, one is that one's real. That one's real. Did you, did you did you buy that Opaville? Did I buy what? The fart in the jar? The fart jar. I yeah. uh, I did buy one from Amaranth. Did you? Oh, yeah, she I farted did. in did jars too. Mm -hmm. She farted. You're in a degenerate. It's a bit of a bit of a trend. It was. Uh, it smelled horrible. It smelled like. Shit. Did she actually eat the crawfish like I requested? I don't want to let it all escape. <laughs> That's a pretty strong fart. I'm surprised. I'm surprised. I can smell it still. Dude, what is wrong with me, bro? So you actually, you actually <laughs> more saying, did you like, like crack the seal like this and, and like try to yeah, hold it for later? Yeah, there's nothing left in there. It's, it's empty now. I, 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 uh, I actually had a guy, a contractor redoing part of my house and he, I let him take a whiff on camera and he was like, oh, <laughs> he's like this really old guy. It was really funny. About y'all's age. Oh, what did oh, you <laughs> how old, how old are you guys? Yeah. 37. Ancient. 37. I turned I turned 50 this year. You're the same age it's as my ridiculous. father, Boogie. Yeah, I know. It's ridiculous. I can't. Why the fuck am I still in the YouTube game? Oh, yeah, because I'm broke. Uh, but also, uh, like, how the fuck am I still alive? Isn't that insane? Like, you cover a lot of fat people on your yeah. channel. It's one of my yes. favorite things that, that you do. Um, if you guys have not watched, like, any of the My 600 Pound Lives, watch them through Oompa's eyes because they're fucking fantastic, okay? Uh, but that said, how many of those people have you talked about are fucking dead and i'm still breathing what the f that's weird surprisingly i th i think you'd be surprised how many are not dead and how many are just like have completely turned their lives around oh yeah i think only I two have died know about what that's like really yeah, tammy's tammy's husband caleb died and then i think one other guy but uh a lot of the other fellows like Kate, casey king he turned his life around he, he's doing extremely well he manages a Home Depot. I know Stephen Asante hasn't turned his life around. <laughs> yeah, oh gosh, no, yeah. <laughs> yeah. We should get him on the pod. Oh, we should get him on the. I wonder if we could because last time I, I seen him, he was doing Steve like cameos. Asante. Yeah, and he had like opioid teeth. Like all his teeth had like fallen out and shit like yeah. this. <laughs> it's like good yeah. opioid teeth. <laughs> Well, I, I want mean, to call I, it meth, teeth, I but that. I don't think he's on meth. I think he's on pain pills. I had the same mouth, but you know, my doctor called it Mountain Dew mouth. So, I, but I get it. I, I fully respect what that's like. Um, what is it with your fascination with lol cows? Is it more of a commentary thing? Is there a personal interest there? Like, because you do cover a lot of a lot of unusual people mm -hmm. on your channel. Did right? somebody? Did a friend of yours ask you to do this because he felt bad for us? No, no, no. I would never do it out of empathy. Uh, no, I think it's, um, I mean, it, it started off as just like something to talk about, to do. I saw other people doing it and then I did it and I was like, oh, this is actually extremely interesting. And the first guy that I did a video on was Casey King. 
And then I spoke to him after, and like he had lost a bunch of weight and was doing extremely well. And that kind of like uh, sort of uh, seeded it in my brain as something that I could do that's that's interesting. I think, you know, chemically, I don't know. It's a business as well. My YouTube channel, I I love uh, I love doing what I do. I have a lot of people that I enjoy doing work with. I like saying on the internet and seeing what people have to say in response. I don't know. I could approach it from 50 different angles. One of them being what you said, and then I find it fascinating. These people are fascinating. You know what I fear about weight loss the most? What? What? The f***ing loose skin. Yeah. Like, like yeah. I've always I, thought, like, is there a happy point where I feel better about myself and I no. feel like I look better, but without no, no. the vicious amount of loose skin that comes with it? You're like 36 years old. Deal with I'm thir- about to turn 38. <laughs> All I right. mean, the reality of it is, if you look at everybody that's gotten this weight loss or like weight loss surgery and recovered that way or, or like lost the natural way, they have a tremendous amount of loose skin. Obese to beast is a perfect mm-hmm. example of somebody who still looks really good, but once his shirt's off, you know, you can definitely see the scars. But at the end of the day, that's what it is. It's scars. You should be proud of it. I, I think he's I don't proud mind of it. the scars because, you know, some scars should be worn with pride. I'm talking about like where it yeah. gets to the point where it's detrimental to your health. Like you got, you just got big folds laying on top of each other, like 50 pounds of extra weight that just, yeah, you, get you do a fundraiser like, like you that. did for your surgery and well, get all the fun. I mean, oh, that surgery works so I, well for me tommy like i'm still to this day like people will still accuse me of stealing the money i mean i don't mean i don't mean i I don't want to get as demonetized but i would show you guys but i've needed skin removal surgery for about three years now and the skin is breaking down and it's like miserable under there and i'd I'd be glad to show it to you guys the problem with skin removal surgery is the actual dangerous surgery like cutting your stomach out is pretty relatively easy cutting huge parts of organs off of your body Organs? No one cuts an organ. Your skin out. is an organ. Your skin is an organ. Yeah. Is it really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And it, it, like yeah. people have died. Uh, like I do. I, I do watch a fair amount of my six hundred pound life and stuff. It sounds like and an people have gotten that surgery and died. People don't want to lose weight. I don't know. No, 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 no listen. Look no, Tommy. I'm telling you, people <laughs> have lost the weight, gotten the skin yeah. removal surgery, and the skin removal surgery is so dangerous they die from that They're because like put- like they they will cut from hip to hip. Right. And you lose part of your pubic mound. You lose all that loose skin from your stomach. And that's one of the surgeries they wanted to do for me. The second so surgery they wanted to do for me was to remove my breasts and remove my uh, loose skin on my arms. Right. And that's a second surgery I have to recover from. And the recovery time on this stuff is like several weeks of immobility. You have to stay in bed. And there's one woman uh, who refused to stay in bed. She's like, oh, I, I can finally move. I've, I've, I've been stuck in bed my whole life. Let me move. And she ended up ripping and tearing it in places, got infected, and it killed her. Yeah, this stuff, I mean, this... Well, I, or the people that just have heart attacks from it. It's that dangerous wouldn't be such a common surgery. It's not a common surgery. It's, it's not, not like, a common surgery. No, you got to fly across the country Uba to find Bill, somebody can you specializes help me out on this? I don't know as much about fat people. I'm a new fat. New fat. This recently is a new fat. fat. <laughs> I'm a new fat. You're a neo-fat. Yeah, yeah, recently, um, <laughs> you're recently fat. Yeah, all I can think of is what it would taste like if you deep fried it. <laughs> Yeah, like chicharrones, you know, I, Mexican uh, food. I, I think be, these guys are looking for excuses not to lose weight. No, I, I will thinking. be very honest with you, and I really want to see Caleb's face when I see this. The only thing that's kept me from eating human at this point is it's illegal. <laughs> Dude, I want it 100. percent I'm on board with that. Yeah, I'm. I what? want it ethically I'm sourced. I'm on board with that. Yeah. Breast milk. If that was something you could buy at the store, I would drink. Why? Why? What do you mean? Why? It's gross. You'd rather drink it, it from a gross. human <laughs> cow. It's a human, re- yeah. <laughs> Y'all never tasted breast it's milk. Normal. Breast milk tastes like plastic. Oh, Honestly. maybe yeah, from someone good. who's unhealthy and disgusting. It's not good. I mean, there I, I a, do like my big girls, sweet, but you know, it's, it's delicious and sweet. I, I have a strip a club hu- story for you if you want to hear it. Sure, why not? No. If it involves breast it's milk. It's a human secretion. In, in my 20s, <laughs> I would go to this uh, strip club. And mm. this is back when I was like looking to shoot content and meet girls to do that kind of thing. And so it was kind of like a professional thing. I wasn't getting lap dances and everything. But there was one girl that worked at this local club called Bottoms Up. And her name was Cricket, uh, which is not a great stripper name. <laughs> it's great. And she was about? very short, missing the majority of her teeth, and a very unattractive woman. And she, <laughs> o- she only ever danced at this club when she was pregnant because men are some men are into that. Oh, I so definitely was not. And on a slow night, she would go from table to table and harass people until you paid her to go away. And one of the ways that she would harass people was when her milk came in, she would squirt you with milk. That's fucking disgusting. I mean, I'll say there's probably people paying to do it, 
But yeah, I'm I, sure I, there is. Well, I'm I definitely got it did. in my face. I definitely got it in my mouth, and I was very unhappy about that. And I did give her the one dollar it took. It was one dollar. She would go That's away if you give her literally anything. You give her one dollar, she left. Dude, if it's good enough for a baby, it's good enough for me. Mm. I mean, it's apparently uh, very nutritious. Of course, would you take? Taste would you partake in crickets uh, source? Oh, absolutely. Oh yeah, yeah. My wife would have divorced me if I made it. Oh, gross. I've had two children. You, you guys are. I thought I, I'm <laughs> like a mean guy, and you guys are drinking like. You know, shit. Dude, I would rather. Look, drink, I'm not uh, stealing it. Like I work for Blizzard or anything here. I'm just, you know, it's a volunteer basis. Uh, yeah, if know. I had a wife, I would rather drink her breast milk than the secretions from a cow. I don't like cow's milk. I don't like cows. I think they're gross. Like, that's fine, but you know what about to, goat like, dying on your on Goats your right. on your significant other? Yeah. I, 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 I mean, like all milk in its essence is just a weird thing like you'll yeah, notice it's pretty nasty I, I, i'm re-watching always sunny and like they use milk to vilify a certain group in there a lot of movies will vilify like bad people drink lots of milk and like they they make it like a special thing the boys is another perfect example homelander is obsessed with breast milk in that show and it's because by its nature milk is kind of evil realistically because you are drinking the this fluid made by a a, a living creature designed to feed its young and we're shoving it up our fat mouse it goes great with probably peanut not butter, a great though. thing to do it, it does <laughs> it does i do i i don't drink milk i'm pretty lactose intolerant but i do same with cheese and cheese is insanely good dude cheese is Holy underrated shit. cheese is f-ing good yeah. And I don't even mean like the good cheese. And I do love some good cheese, like an expensive this, this, this fucking cheese. Faith. I can't I, fuck with. I can't fuck with that cheese with the worms and shit in it. Like, no, thank you. Mm. Oh, I haven't had it. I want to try that. Episode. <laughs> yeah, my goal, my goal before I leave this earth is to try one of every food and one of every animal. How much That's longer you? My goal before I leave this earth is to have a guest on and ask. I haven't made as much progress as I would have liked, Caleb. Boogie, if I'm being Boogie honest Boogie with you, pretty much set a clock on his watch, and that's probably correct. If you uh, <laughs> if you come down, if you come to Texas, I'll, I'll we can get you some some snake. You want to eat some snake? I have had snake jerky once, but it was also cut with beef, oh. I guess, or something. Maybe cut with chicken, so it was not pure. How do you I'll have access to snake. snake just right off? I the gladly top. snake. I got. I mean, there's snakes everywhere. You guys are around here. Why guys not? are a bunch of hillbillies. Are we just gonna snap Dude, one from, out of your yard? I'm from. You're from South Carolina, right, Wings? Yes. I'm from Virginia. And yeah. so, are, so are you, Boogie. <laughs> I was right. You're, you're from like the hills, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. The Black Hills, like the like the lower part of Virginia, yeah. Southwest Virginia. Yeah. yeah, yeah, the little armpit. I'm there, from yeah. Northwest Virginia. Do me a favor, just so because uh, you've been, to, have you been to that part of Virginia? Oh yeah. At any point, past yeah. through it. Okay, please explain to them what a literal nightmare that place actually is, because nobody oh, dude, believes me, man. Dude, anything anything west of Richmond, or if you're in if you're in Central South Virginia and west of Paris Mountain in Northern Virginia, is just like. The, it's the biggest class divide ever you could imagine. Like everything west yeah. of those areas is just such poor people. There's no infrastructure. The fucking schools suck. Um, there's a lot. Like there's the paints dull. The paints dull. <laughs> Damn, there's a color. I thought that was just all south of the Mason Dixon line. Yeah, I mean the it's roads much what are it is. broken up. Yeah, it's like yeah, it's like the not. Mason Dis- the makes Mason Dixon line kind of like inverts and yeah, it's it's just like yeah, a, I, I, it's a we got hole. we got those places here in South Crack where like the only new thing in some cities is the cop cars. Oh yeah. <laughs> and the worst part about it is, and just in case anybody from Southwest Virginia is listening, they are the nicest human beings you'll ever meet. Are they? Like, oh, yeah. oh, come on in. Yeah, you can I have sex I went with to my basic... sister. I don't give where, a where, Where's Fort Jackson? Where's Fort Jackson? That's North or South Carolina. Fort Jackson? Uh, Jacksonville? We, we got, we got no, Fort no, Bragg. No, is it in one of the Carolinas? We got Paris Island. No, Jackson. J- Jackson I, I specifically. Don't... Paris Island is, like, where's, what, what Carolina is uh, Fort Jackson? I don't know. I've never heard of it. All I know is Camp Lejeune and Jacksonville is just outside of Camp Lejeune for the Marine Corps. Oh, right. Fort Jackson. Fort Jackson. I, 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 honestly, and I grew up next to New York City. Uh, You're a Yankee. Um, yes. And the nastiest people I ever, and I admit New Yorkers can be nasty. The nastiest people I met, South Carolina. Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, that's I, a I lie. That, no, dude, absolutely. 100% um, lie. I did not. The rudest it, people i remember my if life. i had elon <laughs> musk money i would still live in south carolina so he's got lot. gryffindor colors acting like slytherin what yeah it looks like he's grip uh griffin house gryffindor because the, the like scarf he's wearing i was yeah. saying but he, he's no yeah. Yeah, okay, okay. so it's like a look can we generation z meme 
Can can we just agree that everyone sucks everywhere, please? Uh, no, 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 we South can't. I can't agree with that. I can't agree with that. I can't agree with that. I've been to places like Los Angeles and San Diego, and I'd rather be with brown people in South Carolina than people in San Diego. Same. No I'm problem with two. I, yeah. Same here. Yeah. <laughs> Cities are just like, <laughs> people are that. rotten. The, the bigger the city, the more rotten the people. That's fair. I, I would I, rather be with rural people than... Um, that, a lot of I would go with that too because, like, I go to Atlanta very often, and I would never want to live in Atlanta. Oh yeah, but I still laugh at them, and they're still. Oh yeah, up. you can definitely point and laugh. I will say, having visited Cleveland now twice, I'm surprised by the people in Cleveland just being so weirdly. Don't get me wrong; like, I didn't like run laps around Cleveland, but I did go into several stores, several restaurants, several Cleveland you know, customer, and like, yeah, Cleveland's kind of amazing for a city. Like I would rather be in Cleveland than Dallas any day of the week. You yeah, know, Dallas I, I go sucks. to Dallas a lot, and I, yeah, uh, I definitely, definitely better in L.A. I had a guy yell at me for not taking photos of his snake in L.A. It was one of the weirdest experiences of my life. But there's a guy standing out in front of like the the Ripley's Museum, and he had a snake. And I'm like filming the front of the Ripley's Museum. He's like, "Don't film my snake," and I'm like, "I'm not." He goes, "You better not." And I'm like. Why are you standing in public? That sounds like something happened in New York. Actually. With a snake? <laughs> if you don't want people to film your snake, that's Welcome so to the street. weird. You know, but like, don't care. <laughs> in Cleveland, everybody's just like, "Oh, hi, honey. Thank you for coming into our store." Like they still had accents. That's fucking weird. I got a question. Why do you have accents? I got a question. First off, Ohio. Is, Ohio is the northern southern state. Begin Ohio. With, but like, what happened mm-hmm. to Cleveland? It's not a southern state. It's the beginning of the Midwest. I'm being facetious here. Like almost everybody I meet that's from the north came from Ohio and South Carolina. They're the worst. They're worse than South Carolina. (laughs) But um, what happened to Cleveland? Was it like a a victim of like the like the car industry? Like like I heard it. It was one of those cities on decline. It might be. You know, I'm 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 actually looking for Tommy for this, and he's silent. Yeah, I don't know. Just check who's running: Democrats or Republicans? I I don't think it goes that far. I think (laughs) it it is. It's a little more deeper than that. It has to be some industry that failed to have that level of poverty. Okay, more Democrats. The deeper Democrats, the more. You guys like talking about politics on this podcast? No, no, not really. Not really. No, I will say. I will say before we get off the topic of, of of politics, I am becoming. The more we discuss it here on the podcast, the more I'm moving away from the left because I don't know, man, like I, I, I start paying attention to more stuff after we talk about this stuff and I'm beginning to realize you guys, you got both pretty center, I think for the most part, I'm a, but I, I consider uh, myself a libertarian. Yeah. I, th- I kind of think that's where I need mm-hmm. to be these days. Cause like I see what's happening in New York right now and it's scary, man. I don't want that happening all over the world. That's crazy. It's crazy. What's happening. Can, Boogie, can I give you be perfectly honest with this? Like I was a Bernie I, bro for the longest time so. and yeah, same. And that made me lean more to the left because like my left leaning axis is I just want healthcare to be a public resource and not a private resource. Right. Like I feel like fuck it up like they do everything else though. Well, I understand it, but where are you in Palestine, Upaville? No, no, no. (laughs) Let me finish my point here, Tommy. But like I watched the Democrats shit on Bernie Sanders, just like they did ran uh, Ron Paul back in the day. Republicans did Ron Paul. And it's like, dude, this is a club and we ain't fucking in it. Republican, yeah, Democrat, exactly. it's we ain't in it. Both sides are yeah. two wings of the same bird that's too fat to fly. And you know it's what always amazes failure. me. Like Oompa, you're fairly non political as far as I've seen in your content. It's not like it's you're business model. I've never seen you pull down like a Casey Neistat and open a video by saying Hillary Clinton. <laughs> no, that's no, who you should that. vote for, right? Like you're never not mm-hmm. gonna be that guy. What the f is it with YouTubers and they think that like you should be telling people how to vote, or even celebrities of any type, especially YouTubers. Dude. Like get a political YouTubers, science I can answer major, this. Right? I can answer this. YouTubers are empty people. They have an empty job, an empty life. That's why they have to say their job is harder than everybody else. So to make it seem like they're important, they tell people how to that vote. That is exactly correct. Right, that is completely 100% <laughs> accurate. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's just like uh, people believe that they, that they, they can, they conflate just random things that they can add to their identity without having to earn them or like prove them logically. They conflate being able to do that with actually being able to provide value to people. Like you don't have to make people laugh by saying vote for Hillary Clinton and getting half of everyone to agree with you. Like it's just it's 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 just like a a non-effort thing that that empty people like to do. And most entertainers are empty. You're correct. I I, I am shocked hearing this from you because I, I, I have to be honest with you. I thought you might be on that side of the aisle. Your your act is very upbeat. All right. And I've got no problem with your act. I really don't. 
Um, but I, I saw you as maybe one of those guys that maybe virtue signals for the sake of virtue signal. And I'm hearing a completely like reasonable sort of businessman YouTuber, which by the way, I, I know the fans don't, but I appreciate a lot more. I, I like people talking that bluntly. Um, but to hear that you say that YouTubers are empty, which has been basically my whole at pointing that out has been my whole act for the past eight years. Um, is very refreshing and and you've changed my mind a little bit about you. yeah i mean uh because <laughs> at least you're on the surface about what you do i'm um, not to say that you're right. empty um but like what other you do most youtubers won't even criticize each other like that which is just really refreshing for me yeah i mean uh yeah. i think virtue signaling for the sake of virtue signaling is like definitely uh for sure something that a lot of people do and it's not always a bad thing either right like it's just not, it's not like a inherently negative thing like if someone's bad and you say someone's bad it doesn't make you a bad person but if you build your entire personality off of just saying that and that's all you can do and you provide nothing else for anyone whether it's like you know if it's just if if all you are online is just that guy then that doesn't matter like as long as you're a good person internally right sure. like it doesn't it doesn't none of the internet stuff matters it's not like none of it's really real i think a lot right. of people no, i think right. a lot of people uh get really like obsessed with it yeah that's something i've really had to come to terms with Very in the last six months or so um like obviously you reacted with the documentary right i didn't watch uh the full video but i i, I skipped around in it uh, and i thought you were pretty fair about it right uh but like preparing myself going into this documentary release i had to remember that the internet's perception of me isn't reality. My friend's perception of me, my perception of me, my family, the people I care about, uh, you know, people I share my life with, that's what really matters. But I, I had been so wrapped up in internet identity for so long. I've been on the internet making content since 97 that I would not have, a year ago, I would not have been able to watch any of your reaction to that <laughs> documentary. Um, and, well, and this show has why, also why really helped me learn to separate, separate it quite a bit. Too. Why can't you do what he does? He knows he does what he does as an act. It's designed to entertain people, but just be a real, a real I'm dude. Trying. I'm trying, but at the time, I think it just came down to lack of self-esteem, lack of self-awareness, lack of anything going on outside of being the empty. Sphere. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> my life was entirely, utterly empty. Once my, once my divorce had hit, uh, all I had left was the internet yeah, you know, it was you know, bad, can I, can I pull the victim card here? I wish I could do what Oompaville does, but since I have trolls, I can never f***ing do it. Like, I would love to be able to take shit from, like, 90 Day Fiance, flip it around, and be able to commentate on it, and actually get views on it. But I know if I do that, all it's going to have is trolls are going to find a way to strike my channel into oblivion, and I'm going to have to be dealing with emails with YouTube for weeks on end. What, I, do I was going to say, why, why don't you just try it? And then I think people Good would enough. be really interested to see your opinion on it. And also if you were, cause, cause like, sure, everything, you know, everyone who's doing stuff on the internet, who's performing, it's always an act. Like it's, you can't, you can't No, you're not just getting like well, a video of you just being yourself well, for an hour. You'd be boring. My, my, you know, my fear is losing income for a month. Right. Uh, yeah. See, I'm not sure if people would be able to, uh, I, I, and, and as far as I'm aware in my community, they don't really have that kind of like power. Uh, but obviously you have next level trolls. So like, I'm not, I, I think yeah, you like, could do like, it. That, and it, if you were to like kind of tie it into making you holding, you using it to hold yourself accountable, I think people would respond positively to be honest, but that's just me. Cause he, here's, here's my fear. Like I had a Twitter and it got struck down because I put final fantasy tactics poster images on it. And they pretended to be like square Enix and like square Enix. They, they like drafted a letter and they did all this to make it look as legitimate as humanly mm -hmm. possible. And they literally got my Twitter banned for like a week off of images that I pulled off of Google Images. It's yeah, like, I mean, that's the problem with the system being faith, automated. Man. But I mean, like, keep in mind, now, when it comes to your YouTube channel, we've got your back now. Keemstar's got your yeah, back. Yeah, now. yeah, yeah. I, I understand, I understand, I understand it, but like, corner, I man. love, yeah. I want to do the content Oompaville does where like, because I love 90 Day Fiance and I love 600 really? Pound Life. And like, I have large amounts of to say about all this well i think i think you should say I, it so I, I just don't think that you should like uh say it and then just be purely hypocritical you know people would yeah. have a problem with that. what do you mean about I, that i mean like if you just if you're just criticizing like for me i i can say you know that's wrong or whatever uh because i know it is and i live a life that is the literal opposite of what these people like they don't make tv shows about people like me they make pe tv shows about lol cows and, and people who just cannot control themselves and like it has to be a dumpster fire right like it, so i'm mm -hmm. coming from a place where 
uh, you know, most people are agreeing with me because most people are not the subject of a TV show that is specifically there to exploit them. Whereas you, I mean, like you literally have an army of trolls that f*** with you and try to exploit you the same way that TLC does. So I think it would be a really interesting thing to, if you were to do it. But if you were to do it the same way that I do it and, you know, act all high and mighty or whatever, then it wouldn't it wouldn't end well, I feel like. You know, you might not know this, but um, I was actually going to be, well, I got invited to be on a show called The Biggest Loser back in... I've heard about this. 2008. <laughs> yeah, I'm old school yeah. PK, yeah. man, like, old yeah. school. They wanted me to sign off on, like, taking steroids. They wanted to pay me, like, 500 bucks a week. I wasn't allowed to, like, do my video game stuff at the ranch. <laughs> That's awesome. You know, and shit like that. And like, and efforts that if I did well, I'd win a hundred thousand dollars, right? Obviously I was making like $12,000 a month doing, being one of the biggest YouTube channels in the world at the time. So I said, yeah. no, <laughs> yeah. but, but yeah. like, Move. I, I think Good you could call. do it though. I think if you just use it to keep <laughs> yourself accountable, I mean, and then, you know, it, it could just be entertaining content. I think those TV shows, no, I, I, I'm curious uh, your take of this stuff. Like my 600 pound life obviously has been exposed a lot now. Uh, where they talk about, you know, forced drama. Uh, that's, what, that's a key phrase here for our fans. But on top of that, like, there's one story about a guy who was forced to take a bath in a, in a tub on his front porch, even though that's, that's not nor- how he normally cleans himself. Yep. Right, yeah, you've yeah. heard about this, right? Uh, so I actually met somebody by the name of James Garrison. You can look him up if you'd like to. He almost got killed by one of these TV shows. Um, because they were like putting the pressure on him to make way in. You got to make way in. You got to make way in. They were telling him a good way to make way in is by setting in a, um, a sauna a, a, in what a sauna and like, be careful about how much water you're taking in. The goal is to sweat it off. We well, gave himself a lung embolism and nearly died to try to make way in on these shows. These shows are dangerous and deadly. I, and I wish I knew the background of it. Cause I picture just like a, a TV crew shows up for like a day or two and they try to create something that's worthy of like Mary Sue on the couch, right? Like they're like, okay, what can we yeah. do to make you interesting to get you get get your viewership up versus the other person on your show or whatever it might be? Yeah, yeah. It's produced. It's 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 you know, reality scripted. Yeah, reality TV is not real. Uh most of what you see on YouTube is a, a characterized version of whatever uh, that you think you're watching. Uh, and everybody when they turn on the camera, whether they mean to or not, they're playing a character to some degree, just like yeah, Caleb said. For sure. And, and uh, go, go but, ahead. Sorry, it, sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. Uh, but when it comes when it comes to these reality TV shows, having known several people in it, I was on one, uh, which was one of the most fair shows ever. But it was uh, Super Size versus Super Skinny, and they were actually pretty fair about it. The worst thing they did was tell me what to order at the restaurant. They told me to get the fattiest, nastiest meal, so I did. You know. Um, but I mean. It, yeah, oh, I was, I was my favorite meal there anyway. I missed that restaurant. Yeah, Hawaiian Brian's, the shit was good. You just got to go into that knowing that. And I do like, I do feel like you do call that out in these, uh, some of the videos I've seen. I got, I got a question. So I, think, I got a question. Do you think uh, they force these guys on like 600 pound life to have that lumberjack breakfast that is ginormous, that fills the whole table? Because I look at this and like, you can't eat this every day. How do you afford this food every day of your fucking life? Where they have like, 18 sausage links, a carton of eggs, a, you know, a triple stack of pancakes. They double up on the syrup. They drink it down with a Mountain Dew. I, I can assure you, having just done a Mike Klom documentary where Mike ordered $250 worth of, of McDonald's, let it set in a corner for two hours till it was cold, then we set it all out on the table, and I sat across from another morbidly obese man by the name of EDP. Uh, all of that was set dressing. Uh, the meals that I ate with Mike, he generally told me what to get or how to order it. Um, the same with the reality TV show that I've done. Yeah, I, I guarantee you, yeah. 100%. 100% that of the time. That makes sense. Yeah, yeah, because nobody wants to eat like that on camera. These, Especially when it comes to like my 600-pound life. A lot of these people, they're literally having their weight loss surgery dangled over their heads. You're not going to get the surgery. We're not going to save your life if you don't do what we tell you to do. So here's you know, another question, the, Boogie. You, your heaviest yeah. was almost 600 pounds, right? It was like 550 or yeah, something yeah. like that. 587. One of the big like like themes of like these TV shows is traveling to Houston to see Dr. Now. And like all of them complain about like the car ride there and being sore. It, at your heaviest, could you have handled like a, a multi-state car ride with that complaint? At my heaviest, I drove to Michigan all the time. I didn't drive. I mostly because like I always I got my, my yeah, heaviest was four seventy two. Four seventy two was my heaviest I've ever been, yeah. and like I could have drove anywhere in the country. 
and not being in pain. Yeah, if I I was sore by the time we got there. Just riding in a car made me sore after six, seven, eight hours, right? Um, but nothing like I. Of course, a lot of these people are being transported in a bed. I can't imagine what it's like laying in a bed trying to hold yourself in position as the the, the van rocks. Maybe it is different, but I don't know if that's staged or not. But I do know the majority of what's on those shows is, and that's one of the things I like about Caleb is he, he's not afraid to call shit out i do have a big question for you though okay, okay? and i i i, I really i i think i already have an answer obviously like i said one of the things that draws me to your content is one of the things that pisses tommy off clearly is that's kind of like nice guy commentary right <laughs> i hate that shit. virtue so, signaling i don't I think it's i don't think it's that i generally i don't think it's about you i think you're like because i don't i don't i don't i don't i don't get the feeling that if I criticized you publicly or goofed on you, that you would just like wreck your life and you'd swing your audience at me. No, yeah. you're making it abundantly clear to me that this is this is what you do for a living, and then you're talking like a normal person on the side. So I, yeah, I, I feel and, like and I, I feel like a lot of YouTubers won't do that. They'll actually just like attack, uh, even through a mild, you know, slight. I also think you know, it's like important that. to realize too that like the 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 quote unquote virtuous that like I I cho- pick and choose my 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 battles very very particularly uh online especially yeah. and if i say something generally what i'm saying is things that i believe 99 percent of the time yeah. uh or yeah, things yeah. that i can rash but you're doing your character i do the same yeah. thing you know I, yeah, uh, yeah i mean sure. i yeah. kind of do it like it's it's not really like a character or an act as much as it is just me trying to be entertaining and engaging and also like sure. i have to, there's a lot of things that i have to do like i'm the type of guy to be honest to just kill myself if things don't go well like just just saying <laughs> Like I'm just, I'm just saying. I'm not like threatening anything, obviously. Really? But like I am a very, very, very self-critical. Always have been incredibly. Just I'm always trying to do in my personal life, outside of YouTube or whatever, what's right. And now I'm conflating what's right with the content that I'm making. So I'm trying very hard to like not be a bad guy. Uh, I have a conscience. The things that I say, sometimes I regret them. When people call me out, I read hate comments. Most of the time, I agree with them. Uh, it's like if you, were, if anyone's critical of me, I don't like. I usually agree. Like generally speaking, you're, you're getting a slice of me that I recorded for an hour three weeks ago. Chances are pretty high. So you're my not one changed. of these guys that you're not one of these guys that panics when somebody makes it like a, something because that that's the no, thing. Like no. I had a thing with the the Act Man where I, I I made. I mean, I've done nasty harsh criticism mm-hmm. but i didn't think this was real and he just swung his whole audience at me now we got it we straightened it out and yeah and whatever that his but that's the, that's the really one because that, that that means the the character because i do that too i can't be yelling and screaming and angry this all this yeah. time i couldn't function in real life and you couldn't be that kind of go-getting but you're trying to be engaging and right. i get that i'm just doing trying to do it in a different way mm-hmm. um your way is more effective <laughs> you know um but but I, I i could i couldn't do your act um even if i just because it's just not me. I wouldn't be happy well, doing it. Where, where I was know. leading was I, I don't think it's as much of an act. Like he said, he's 99% genuine. I'm using the word act for expediency. Mm-hmm. I'm not saying like he's like just like a total phony or anything like that. Yeah, Clearly yeah. that's not the case. I'm Whatever it is, a hyper personality. I'm not like screaming and yelling and pissed off all the time. You know that when we first course, sign yeah, in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, I like, like, like it, so I guess that's an act. But I, I, I try to do what he does. I, I don't say anything whether it be political or something I, I that i don't believe i just may exaggerate my feelings on it so to speak mm-hmm. right uh or how right. angry or how uh, how much i don't care maybe i you know or, or something yeah. like that it's just it's always like a lot of people ends, you know? a lot of people are very critical of me and that i'm a fence sitter and i feel like that's like mm-hmm. uh or like they say okay he's a human mudahar or centrist that just means they don't take a stand for anything it's it's and I can definitely see where people are coming from. I just use the mocking voice to do that. I, I, I see where they're coming from for sure, because a lot of people live their lives like just black and white all the time. I have respect for that, whatever. But like in my real life, I really do not care about the Internet. Like yeah. if it disappeared, if I had my friends and family around me, I wouldn't care. Like it doesn't. Yeah, I have no connection, yeah. no connection to it in any way. I try to do my best. I don't want anything to have any sort of like, for example, I make videos critical of people. Um, a lot of the time I, I called one person. This is just like a really small example. Uh, I called a dude a schizo. I think I put schizo in the title of a video 
and I saw a thing on Reddit of someone saying that they were upset that I used the word schizo, and it had like three Spoon. upvotes. <laughs> well, see, I saw that, and I was like, and then there is someone who is, is schizophrenic. I responded to it with my actual Reddit account because I was just curious, like, what their actual thoughts were. They didn't think it was actually me, and it, like, actually made me feel bad for using the word schizo, genuinely. Not that I'm not going to say that in, in really? uh, not that I'm not going to say yeah. it in real life, but I choose to now try and not call people schizo uh, because there are like literal people who who walk around, um, you know, who who watch entertainment. See demons. But you could you could do that with anything or any kind of slight or anything. You almost can't do criticism if, if it if it where if you're if you're being sincere. Of course. You really you almost can't do any kind of criticism or use any ad hominem because it's going to offend somebody and very deeply. Of course, but I mean, don't but, you ever think of yeah, that? You, you can also control what you're criticizing to things that people can actually control as well. People cannot control the fact that they are schizophrenic. I don't agree with that. Okay, I don't agree with that. I, I think everything's. I I I, I generally I think you are being sincere. I am I absolutely. Yeah. yeah, I'm not. I'm not. Yeah, I'm not yeah, calling yeah. it fake. Like, or I, I try not to I, make but, fun but, of the way people yeah. look. Uh, unless they are obese, because there is a level well, of control that, that, but to that's, obesity. That's YouTube's terms of service. And also, I, dis that, yeah, I disagree also. with that point. With what? <laughs> there's a level of control with obesity. You, you think yeah, that I, you I, can't like I, lose weight I, if you decide to? I would say that uh, I agree with, with him here, because, uh, again, my biggest issue is mental illness. And so, yeah. yes, if I've decided to lose weight, yes, absolutely, I would be able to so do I can't it say crazy, if I can overcome the mental <laughs> illness aspect, right? Um, but most of the time, I, and I've said this my entire life, if someone's 50 pounds overweight, maybe it's just a choice. 100 pounds overweight, it might still be a choice. What, two, three, four, five hundred 500 pounds, 1,000 pounds overweight, that is that is something seriously wrong in that person's brain For sure. at that point. I mean, right. I, I look at it the same way like this. still have a level of control over it. Like a crackhead can technically I, I think, choose not to smoke crack, but like, it, like there is like a 10% level of control. But I when I was in the death throes of my life right before I got weight loss surgery and stuff like that, I would sit in my truck and cry knowing I was going to go to McDonald's and I didn't want to do it. And I had no choice but to go to McDonald's because if I didn't, I would get headaches. I, my blood sugar would dip. I yeah. would get angry. I would rather be I, morbidly like, obese than schizophrenic because yeah, schizophrenia yeah, is something that per, you know permeates every single like you, you can't. I would rather be morbidly obese than blind. You, Did you, you see, see the I'm AI saying? chat like thing? The what? The AI chat bot filter thing, where fat people were up, were actually hated on more than like African Americans, women's Jews, Mexicans, and Latinos. Probably, yeah, I, I could imagine. <laughs> Is, yeah, well, so do. you're not you're not so you're not saying that you can't make fun of. No, no, no. I, I'm know. saying I decide yeah. to sometimes. Uh, yeah, like, that's fine. like if that's someone's fine. schizophrenic, I'm not going to call them a schizo and knowing that people like I, I know people who are schizophrenic and like they don't give a f but seeing one person yeah. i tried to use like a level of empathy to see where they're coming from had an actual conversation with them and i was like yeah i never considered that saying schizo so i'm never i'm never gonna see an own balloon video that that, that you know i you know i i, I love this tommy c uh stream but he uses the word schizo no i don't give a much for my I, i'm not oh! i'm not going I mean, to yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I don't yeah, get yeah. mad yeah, at yeah. people <laughs> i think freedom of speech is the i, I i'm a constitutional i love the constitution freedom of speech uh, i mean there's literally a a smorgasbord of firearms behind me on the ground all right you're a good guy then um, you're, and you're like my, you're if you think team. that words are going to <laughs> offend me you're wrong if you think that I'm going to do something to be, if you think I'm going to be offended on the beha on behalf of someone else, you are wrong. But if I will knowingly and, and willfully control my speech that I am voluntarily putting on the internet for money, by the True. way, I will try to. Okay. I, I, that's yeah, I, I will too. try yeah. to. Yeah. I will yeah. try to keep my conscience clean and not offend people Fair for enough. just the sake of you know, for specifically people who who have things that they cannot control with them. Which I True. believe there is a level of control you have over eating food yeah 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 I, and I'll, I'll be honest with you i think caleb is about as empathetic as a skinny person could possibly be <laughs> to this scenario. right right like like having i don't like never... empath i don't yeah, like people that is so empathetic. funny i feel like a lot of people who've never struggled with morbid obesity may not really be able to fully so comprehend it i'll uh, i'll, and, I'll level with you guys why you might think that i'm an empathetic person i have a uh i have a panic disorder and a terrible 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 anxiety disorder that was i was like partially uh i forget what it's called it's like pre-drome or something like that for a while uh, i thought i was schizophrenic because my brain didn't work properly right like it just literally didn't work properly and then in unison with that i had a heart disorder 
have a heart disorder uh, uh, called PSVT, proximal supraventricular tachycardia, which like my heartbeat is really weird sometimes. Mm. Um, and it like, it beats super fast and then it like flops and, and I don't know, it's really weird. It hasn't happened a lot recently, but like there is times when I, when I've felt as if there is no, I have no control over that. Like I can't go outside and there's nothing wrong with me. I'm physically, yeah, I'm physically fit. I can run, you know, I'm, I'm sh like, not to brag, but shred. Yeah, great. I'm beautiful. Like, yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> why didn't you just go outside then? Ex that's what I'm saying. That's exactly what I'm saying. Yeah. So I understand, but there is a level of control I have over that, that I exercise on a consistent basis to build momentum. Sure. And it, my life now versus what my life was 10 years, unrecognizable mentally from the inside out. Promise. Well, I will, I will say this, okay? Uh, having consumed like a good 80% of your content at this point, I think. Uh, at least when it comes to morbidly obese yeah. people. I don't get on all the drama stuff, but mm -hmm. I do like it when it comes. To, I give you the fat pass. I don't know what the equivalent of a fat guy pass. You make us fun of mm -hmm. as much as, in your style and the way that you've previously done it. You've never crossed the yeah. line, in my opinion. You don't need Please a fat pass. You do what you like. And, and just to be clear, <laughs> I, I'm like when I say you have a level, of, when, when there you can control, like if I just say you can control whether or not you're fat, I understand that there's like nuance. Like I'm not an idiot. I'm of not. Course. I'm not yeah, a stupid yeah, yeah, guy. Course, yeah, yeah. I understand that. Like, oh, I can run 50 miles right now if I wanted to, but I'm not, and I can't. You know, like I get. Sure. It. I, yeah. I'm not I, a fucking I, I agree idiot. With you there too. So uh, I do understand that it is possible to, uh, you know, get stuck. But I will say, having a self-imposed prison is a privilege that is only a thing that has been allowed to be a thing very recently. And like that, knowing yeah. that, whether it's anxiety or obesity or, you know, having trouble with money, whatever the fuck it is, any sort of addiction that like you can control, but it's like tough to get out of it, whatever, seeing it as from the perspective of that is what gives me, you know, the, the impetus. So you're saying there's freedom and discipline? Sort kind of. of. Thing? I think like, there's, can I I think there's up, freedom yeah. and discipline and there's freedom in faith and having faith in yourself. Well, that's where I fell. <laughs> I have no faith in myself. I'm, I don't have any faith my, my in whole, My whole thought process is this. Have you ever seen somebody go through the throes of like uh, an opioid fallout or like a crack addiction? I've seen alcoholism. Yes. Yeah, cause it's not I the too. same thing. Alcoholism is a little bit different, but it can get to that level. But like it's, it's a different beast, right? Because like you can choose not to smoke. You can choose not to take pain pills. Mm -hmm. But the consequences of that are fucking vicious. I mean, alcoholics die when they stop drinking. Like, well, some yeah. of them do. That's I mean, a true, out, like an actual happen. legitimate alcoholic, like they will, it's more dangerous to wean off alcohol than it is to wean off opiates. Yeah, DTs and all yeah, that. That's yeah, that's like, well, opiates can kill you too, though. But like, yeah, but it is statistically yeah. more dangerous. You know when I was a kid, I knew a Korean war vet and, and everybody used to steal his, his alcohol because he couldn't do shit about it. And um, I remember I, uh, I went home, a buddy told me, he's, hey, you know that guy around the corner? Um, he died. And I'm, I remember thinking, I know there's a bunch of guys in stealing all this booze. So, yeah, I, I, that's probably what mm -hmm. killed him. So, yeah, yeah. yeah I'm, I'm well aware it's bad. Of, uh, of stuff like that. I, I, but, but the point I, is, well, that there's a level of control there. And I, I think I think people look at fat people and they don't give it that same level of addiction. Because I say sugar is a f addiction. You're correct. You know, carbohydrates are is an addiction. You know. Well, what good would that do? What good would that do? If, if, we, if we held obesity... At the same point, we would like something like heroin. How does that help fat people? It doesn't help. I mean, us, I would but like. I, 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 it's more of like having empathy. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's you're the thing. With you're both an of addict. You guys. This is the problem are. I have with both of you guys. You're constantly in this mode. You don't know what it's like. And I, I got to be honest, with you, it's never worked for you, either of you. And it, 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 it really doesn't matter. It's a, it's a red herring. Uh, I would agree. In the grand I, but here's, here's the thing. Here's the thing, though, Tommy. Like, both me and Boogie have actively our entire lives tried to beat it. We're not actually sitting around here. Oh yeah, just getting I, 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 I have no doubt. I have no doubt. I do. I, I agree with Boogie to the point where you, once you get, get, um, you get to a point where it's, it's definitely mental. After, after a hundred, two hundred pounds, for sure. I get you. I also know it doesn't matter how empathetic the people mm -hmm. are around you. That's not going to help. That's what I'm saying. That's why I don't. And I, I do have empathy. And I'm actually an say, empathetic person. Yeah, most people I are not particularly empathetic to drug misplace. addicts either. Let's just be Here, honest. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. Here, here's the difference between like I, when I hear because I make a special effort, just like he does, not to say schizo, not to misplace my empathy because I know that could do damage to the person I'm giving empathy, and it could do damage to myself. Where I'm just. I, uh, all the time well, wait, and I have so, a thought. I, 
And and I I think it can. And you guys bring up. You have no idea what it's like. And I'm like, you know what? I don't. It's because of good decisions. Like, and I'm not giving you my empathy. You don't have the right. I, I to think. Take um, it. Let me. Wait a second. Hold on. Our guest does have a call. I want to see what what, uh, what Boogie and and uh, uh, Wings. What you guys think about this? Because uh, I I do agree with Tommy, and I I have a bit of a um. I'm on the spectrum. Like when I was a kid, I was had no empathy at all. Um, and it's like a learned thing for me, generally speaking. Ooh. Uh, it's and like a I, oh yeah, pretty much. Like on, honestly, like <laughs> just I was a really bad. I was, me, I was I was a f- asshole when I was a child. Like genuinely. Um, but uh, uh, so there's a level of like trauma too, right? Like trauma is something you can weaponize. N- not not from like speaking from people's past or whatever. But you're saying like, should you be nice about being like, should you treat fat people like you treat an addict? Like there, there is there is a level of benefit to approaching something so, uh, you know, something so, so impossible to control from the, the person who like it's tough to get out of the obesity thing. There's a there's a there's a benefit to approaching that with, you know, you're not traumatizing the, the people. You're not calling them, you know, fat, move fat ass or whatever. like that doesn't work. Right. Yeah, doesn't there work is either, a yeah. there's like a mi- middle ground of like how much weaponized trauma you have to uh and encapsulate your advice with uh or or empathy to be able to get someone t- to actually want to change themselves because like, if 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 it's you know inspiration or desperation if you act out of inspiration uh you'll change if you act out of desperation you might change but it might be too late as well you'll just be dead as well that's what most people do so it's like you have to be careful not to traumatize people is what i'm saying by giving them advice even I mean, if it's I'll- like weak you know i mean I'll, I'll go as far as to say that i think our society has leaned in the wrong direction to some degree not everybody but like seeing morbidly obese people on the cover of sports illustrated probably not a great plan uh you know the fat uh, advocacy movement the the health at any size movements these movements are detrimental misplaced empathy to morbidly and that, obese that's people, that's what i'm talking right? about but and i think there is a, yeah there needs to be a middle ground and that mm-hmm. middle ground needs to be like hey man like i i feel for you but you're destroying your own body how can we help you not do that? I'm not going to help you stay fat. I'm not going to help you live in a society where you choose to be fat. Obviously, I'm not going to help you do that. That's the wrong kind of empathy. The right kind of empathy is what resources can we allocate? What kind of regulations can we put into place to prevent cases like you from happening again? Like childhood obesity, well, childhood obesity is a real f- thing in mm-hmm. this nation and it's becoming a thing worldwide when i was a kid when i was 1979 little fat boogie walking around i was the one fat kid in the f- state now <laughs> a, a, a fat kid in southwest virginia is the more common thing you don't mm-hmm. see skinny kids anymore in southwest virginia i'm shocked shitless every time i go there so it's a, something is systemically fucking wrong and we need to have the empathy when we're at the f- polls we need our congressmen to have the empathy to figure out the f-ing problem and fix it but i will promise you this no mother f- screaming at fat people online is ever going to help that's never well, yeah see, no that, that, that's never going to help but you know i will say because I, I although it is starting to spread i'll be honest with you you know when i used to travel home um like i i i, I didn't I'm, I'm not really attacking you guys i'll attack you guys when i f-ing see fit i just yeah, don't course, see fit yeah. right now i didn't see guys your weight over here ever Ever, in I Germany. mean, like ever, and I'd go home and I'd be just like, you know, I forgot. I like when I used to hear about the obesity ep- epidemic back in two thousand four. I, I, I just, yeah, whatever, it, it lose weight. But when I, when I, when I'd come back home and I'd see like how common that was, and you just don't see that in Europe, you know, you almost gotta wonder: is do they have to start regulating the food? So um, that, not that, so much like no McDonald's, but the the, the stuff that we do eat for dinner. I, I, would, go, I, I would go so far as the advertisement, because just imagine if, no, 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 one hundred percent. Like, dog, it's a look, first, look at it's a first amendment yeah, violation. I don't think we need to be. It's a first. Char- it's, I don't think we, we need, need to be targeting camps. children. Well, do yeah. not you say be first am- targeting children with cheeseburger ads. No, 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 no. Listen to me. I'm sorry. It's never. It helped. It didn't help the cigarette people still die of cancer people, every year. Though. It's such an easy cop It did help to cigarette give the people. Grow. Hold up, hold up, hold up. I do. I like the help. idea of Ow. just just blaming it on the politicians. I do like the yeah, idea of that. That's pretty funny. Yeah, yeah. Would yeah. you well, not it's agree, Tommy? Than blaming that, myself. That, that I refuse to blame myself. I refuse now. to blame myself, guys. <laughs> 
Because, like, here's the thing. No, just, I, I, just imagine I, I, if they I, I, if they advertise crack on billboards. When Kennedy announced in 1961 that it gives you cancer 100, percent there's no doubt about it. That's when you start to see the drop off. This advertisement stuff is stupid. It's as stupid as when oh Joe Camel because Joe Camel is cartoon like, so he'll he'll make kids smoke. The idea that the, that's one of those things that you do. That doesn't is isn't supposed to help, but make you feel like it helps. It's total virtue. No, signal. no, no, motherfucker. And, and just imagine all, they and advertise it's a First Amendment violation. Game. Listen, it's you're talking First over Amendment me. Violation. I haven't got a chance. And plenty of people die of crack, and there's it, there's not there's not Joe's crack store. So it's just it's just <laughs> this a First is, Amendment this, this violation. This is the understanding I'm actually warning though, right, right here. Like the fact is, is oh, like when you, you, you when you see me in a room, you know why I'm a fat motherfucker. You can you can smoke you can you know do why cocaine fat over here? and you nobody you know will know fat, unless they see you do cocaine. Over here? Do you want to know why there's not fat people over here? Because nobody gives a f about them. They don't give the empathy. They don't do all this. Sh they don't the have fattest person in the world is the United Kingdom. Yeah, well, United. I, I, well, I, what do you mean? You you're just talking at your. I, I do now. think there is Let's a see. level of. Uh, I, I do think there is like a level of responsibility the government should maintain. Yes, I know, in, but it, like cutting advertisement, that's such like that, that, that's such like an empty sort of. Uh, what do they call that armchair? I, I will tell you this, you Tommy. Cut the advertisement. Uh. If I wasn't on YouTube and I seen like a Hardee's burger, I would never eat it. Fucking Hardee's. You're a retard. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, this is a, this is a person that is are, going through wait. the throes of food addiction, and I'm giving. giving stuff, I'm telling you uh, this. They, they, you're giving stuff to Palatino. Oh, I got Joe Camel banned. Oh God, there's like a hundred thousand cancer so you deaths are, a day. You are Jeez. you are like literally the ultimate customer, basically the ultimate 100%. consumer. So like advertising works 100 percent on you. 100 percent with food. Like I, I would go so far as this. I will. So I will. Retired, I will squeeze <laughs> five dollars to the point that Abraham Lincoln's eyes pop out, unless it's at Fuddruckers. I will drop I, a forty dollar yeah. bill. I Who the f is eating at Fuddruckers? I, I do. I, with I, I good taste, agree. boogie. They don't eat at Arby's. I, I do. I ate at a Fuddruckers like two months ago. It was the. Sh Oh my god! I, I do agree with, with uh, the whole politics, blaming it on like pol political the, if the advertising thing. Like, if there was more of a focus on like education and health and like subsidizing local farmers and having uh, co-ops and and like the way California or maybe does, making healthy food affordable. Like, have you ever looked at that? Uh, yeah. I, I I would agree with that. I would Which, agree with that's that. That's what Europe does, I, though. That's what you're saying. That that is quite yeah. literally what Europe does. Like they they ban ingredients. There's not a lot of empathy for fat people here either. Because There's there not aren't a lot of go-to groups. Because it's not a problem. You know what? It, well, it, 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 why isn't it a problem? Because of you know, and there's also there also is we have a uh, like it's not a it's more of a co-op. It's not free healthcare. Yeah. Uh, it's not. It's not 100. percent Everybody thinks mm -hmm. it's just like you know. You just go in there and check in. No, there's all sorts of money coming into it. It's a co-op. It's probably why it still works. Yeah, and it's not falling apart like it, the NSA. Like, um, so, so there's also this like, um, and this is a cultural thing, and this could not be built in the in the America in our lifetime. There is a sense of responsibility that you have to stay fit. So you don't drain the system. Can you imagine yeah. yes. an American? Imagine, that? but yeah, imagine, imagine the psyop though, because this is now we're into the the territory of psyops. Europe, the European psyop is unity and love. The American psyop is McDonald's and that. Cheetos, Cheeto, uh, Cheerios. So, like, actually, it's it's held together by virtue. Virtue signaling, so to speak, in guilt. In America? Uh, it's not really, it's not unity love. We're in Germany, buddy. Oh, Germany. Okay, you're <laughs> European. Okay. It's not, yeah, I would try, no, and it's not held to, in any other state. It's more, I would say it's, it, 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 on, on the more generous side, it's duty, personal duty. Oh, my God, can you imagine an, an American get their head around that? And there's the other part that there's social consequences. That's that's what really keeps it together. Yeah, and there are, to opinion. be fair, there are a lot of people who believe, you know, who who do who are good people in America. Um, like there are there are the difference between Germany and France is the difference between Texas and Oklahoma. I mean, like distance wise, geographically, there's a lot of differences sure. in culture. Like that that's one thing sure. you know that a lot of people don't really understand. But I I, I do believe that the the psyop of like food Cheerios are not heart healthy. Like that's not no. that's just that doesn't make no. sense. Billions of dollars are spent uh, to to f and falsify studies so doctors will get like doctors don't prescribe healthy diets. They just prescribe shit. like that. That's well that's well known and well documented. That's a, that's an American problem, and I believe it's a psyop. I mean, I, I, let me yeah, let me go as far as to say well, that I, mean, I might I be a crazy part. person, <laughs> but I think the best way for them to profiteer from humans in America, and I am a crazy person. Remember when I say this is to take advantage of people both coming and going.
And the first thing they do is they feed us the worst possible types of food. That's the cheapest. They produce, offer us. So they they don't feed us. Charge the most for it. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's really difficult for well, someone uh, working minimum wage to afford anything other than. I, I can get a dollar right? McDouble or I can go in. It's very cheap. I can get a dollar yeah. McDouble or I can go and get a salad for $12 at Food Line. When, when I was, right. my parents are both self-employed. Uh, there was a time for like four years, basically, where my parents, like they didn't have really any money. And like, we weren't sure if my parents were going to, we were going to be homeless, et cetera. Um, and we ate nothing but rice and beans. And that was very cheap and healthy, relatively healthy. And then we would shoot a deer. And I mean, beans, beans are a superfood. That's yeah, true. And they're rice, extremely not cheap. so much. Extremely right. cheap. But, but look, at the, look, yeah. at the, look at the, look at the other side of this. Like if you're very, very poor and like, even like the McDoubles out of reach, your, your access is noodles with sodium. Re well, rice and me, beans. Okay. I mean, what are you talking about? Those are, those are incredibly cheap lentils. Yeah. Let me, let me fully impact this, unpack this. Cause I really want to see if Caleb has a reaction to this at all. Okay. I think, that number one, they they produce the cheapest possible foods with the least nutrition on purpose, sell it at the cheapest possible price to make sure that we are unhealthy, to make sure that because an, an unhealthy populace is easy to control. And secondly, I think when we go to the doctor to deal with those issues, they do not attack the root of the issues. They profiteer by giving you treatments treatments that help you mitigate the damage help you with the side effects help you with the side effects of the other medications that you're taking they're not there to stop the root cause of the problem because they know the root cause of the problem is systemic yeah and it's all it's all i, I don't think that it's uh that i like the sia i use the term psyop the same way tommy uses the term act i don't think it's like an insane conspiracy <laughs> like they're trying to make us all fat they are literally just trying to make as much money as possible because they can mm -hmm. and and, that, and that's yeah. yeah it's like a, it's not like a no, conscious no, 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 thing no. it's the, they know what's good for of them yeah. And yeah i think, I, most I, things and I think are the way to like that yeah and i think yeah, the, i think you're right i i think what it comes down to is is they do the same thing to us as we do we do cattle we we shovel antibiotics into them when they get sick right we do the same thing to humans now uh, we shovel pills into us every time we're sick. We feed them the cheapest possible food, which is corn, which is subsidized by the government. And we profiteer from them, from their labor, from their meat, from whatever else we can get from that cow. Labor yeah, in terms he's of milk. Asking you, he's asking you, is that a conscious effort? Is people sitting in a room, a smoke filled room? I don't room, believe so, no. Um, no, coming, I, yeah, up, I don't coming, think coming so. Coming up with that. Yeah. Or it's is just this to make just money. It's the Harvard Business School. This, yeah. the Boeing, same exact example. You have to make more profit. Infinite scalability, infinite growth. You can never not well, make a lot of you money. Gotta, sometimes you got to cut yeah, back to compete with other people. Like I used to own a restaurant and we had to have like a two ninety nine hot dog combo because if we didn't, they would go a mile down the road to McDonald's. Yeah, so that's not a conspiracy. That's just you have to be in the game. Competition, like you have to have yeah. Drama to be in the Competition game. and, and yeah. money and just like our values are, are uh, you know, skewed. I'm sure politicians could do something. I am not going to pretend to be smart and know what they have to do, but I am certain advertising has nothing to do with it or have minimal Lobbying or no impact. definitely has something to do with it. Lobbying is the, the, oh, the lobbying basis is of all, yes. is, yeah. of I all agree that, problems. Right? If, if advertisements never worked, Tommy, they wouldn't do it and spend millions doing it. No way! If it did, it's conscious, but taking it away is not going to be much if, that if, good either. That's if my people point. Were better educated, I'm not saying the advertising doesn't advertising work. Advertising wouldn't I'm work. I'm not saying well. it doesn't make a fucking slave. Maybe it makes you a slave, not me. Yeah, right. Advertising but does I'm not the, work. I'm on the me. targeted you know? demographic. I'm the motherfucker. I'll spend forty dollars at a fast food restaurant. Ad I will go as far as to say that advertising worked very well on me as a child. As an adult, I avoid yeah, ads dude. at all. Halo turn. Those ads right? worked really well on me as a child. And, and I mean, like, you got to remember, I was raised at a time we were holding our birthday parties at McDonald's, for God's sake. Yeah, I, I mean, me too. Well, Boogie, I'm only two years old. Uh -huh. me, so yeah. I would sure. like to say, yeah. too, yeah. Uh, when I was talking about eating nothing but beans and, and rice and lentils and shit, um, when I would eat fast food, it was literally like a surprise party. Like, it was so exciting and such oh, an yeah. insane yeah. privilege. Yeah, that's true. It was a treat it when was I was so, a kid. It was such a treat. This was like treat. 15 years ago. For me, this wasn't even that long ago. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So it's like, uh, like I just don't, I just, I don't understand. Like the, the, uh, it, it's, it's like I, I don't know. I don't want to. I, I should not say well, what well, I was going to say. Let me explain. Let me, can I show let you me try to explain this? it to you. I can explain it to you if you let me. Because I had um, sweet peas so, and calabasa for lunch, but I, I don't shit, crave I, this whatsoever. You know, I'm craving. I'm, I'm craving. I'm craving general so chicken and a little main. I'm gonna fight that craving the rest of the day. Yeah. So, so the way, the, the way it you. works, here's how advertising, in my opinion, uh, fits in, okay? You have a child whose dopamine 
is pretty much regular, right? I mean, these days with a phone in their hands by the time they're three, probably not. iPad kids, a whole other thing, right? But when I was a kid, our, our dopamine regulation was pretty reasonable other than like maybe television and video games affecting it, right? And when you took the dopamine hit of a cheeseburger, which they were heavily mm-hmm. marketing towards children, I mean, that does something to you, yeah. right? Especially in your formative years. Dude, it definitely me up for life and then i also had the extra problem that my mother was feeding me wrong on purpose you know she admitted that to me when i was 25 we're she, going off the, right. the thing but is taking, but the point that i'm taking, making is, is the, the advertising, advertisement taking it away going to going yeah, you, to have any kind of sh- measurable impact you, yeah you, no i'm saying though at the time in the 70s and 80s when they were purposely targeting children it, the result is adults like me and wings and that's the reality i think that's my opinion. You I think? Could be wrong. You don't know. I, I, don't I, know I was raised shitty. Fairness. That's why I'm fat. Yeah. <laughs> like, I got, well, I got so, so, so. They said, are we going to ignore the First Amendment to tell people that they can't advertise their legal products? Well, well in they, my they did that with smoking to say Cheerios are heart healthy because of a study that yeah, they I think that's because, really I, I don't yeah, see, see that's more reasonable. See, they're they're. they're I don't think they're thinking of the big picture. You're thinking of the whole mm. thing. They're, they're, you know, you can be a little more honest with nutrition facts and stuff like that. Although I, I, but I mean, the same thing with goes for you with the advertisement. Is it going to have a measurable impact? Is it one of those things that we do those things? Let's say we do the Cheerios, but we like, do the, like the advertisement the advertisement are and nothing changes. Um, that's that's even mildly measurable. I mean, no, I, no, I, mean, I don't think anybody's saying here you can't advertise food. Millions of tax We're dollars. We're saying no, 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 no. no, no. Listen, listen. To like, for example, like if you got. Uh, uh, say you got a thing of mashed potatoes. They're not actually mashed potatoes. They're like literally a compound. Like for example, they use they use like Elmer's glue in, in place of mayonnaise. They use the patties aren't there because they sit under the hot lights and they mildew and they do all this. So they use a a product that looks like the product they're selling you, but it's not actually there. So they make it look more delicious than it actually is. Mm-hmm. Right when you see a promotional picture, you see a big two and a half inch burger that's juicy and it looks delicious. When you get it, it's just a smashed mush thing Mm -hmm. that's barely held together it's dishonest advertising to begin with right and i feel like i think re-education camps (laughs) (laughs) i don't know just kidding i I do have a video i I need to show oompa loompa i see what you're saying i mean i i I, I don't want here's what i'm saying part of i don't want to give i don't want to give the politicians a chance to pretend they're doing something about it. Yeah, that's Show fair. me something that could have a measurable. Well, I want the politicians yeah, I, I, to end now, the world drugs If it's too. advertising, I'm sure something can be done. Like Wing said, you know, they did something about cigarettes. But show me something that don't do something like like change the uh, uh, the, the ingredients uh, to be more honest on on Cheerios and throw that out, and then nothing really changes. But we, you know, pol- you well, just make give it so the, that the politician a pass. That you actually have yeah, let me to finish. Show the food. You've given the politician a pass because hey, I did do something. I got rid of the advertising. I changed. It's like it, what idea? And this is a question because I don't know what idea is going to have the most impact, not the one that's going to make us feel good. Because we're sticking it to the company. You know, what's going to work? I mean, not I think what's going to make us feel good. I think Caleb had it right when it comes down to education in this country definitely needs some help. And I think if, especially, it I mean, probably couldn't hurt. Yeah. I think if we were educating our people better to, to have some, I don't know, what, what do you call it? Internet knowledge or internet literacy or advertising literacy and having a better understanding of how to navigate these things? It could have a, a, parent's a job, positive though. impact. I mean, I'm always telling my son everything's bullshit i mean i don't know yeah, i think not all parents are built the same tommy some parents are dog shit and they hate their kids well, what I, do you want what, what, i gotta suffer because them <laughs> no i'm saying it I takes think, a village to america, raise a child i think america's was no, at its best when our education Keep system your village away was from designed my child. to produce doctors and lawyers and educators and scientists instead of f-ing obedient starbucks and mcdonald's workers which is what is it, it, it's geared towards now i think i got taking, i got a I video i want to show up before we end because I promised my niece oh, yeah. I would do this. My niece loves you, Oompa, and I, and she wanted to make a video <laughs> talking about her. So she did this. Aww. Her, which one works? I'm so sorry, but I just want to say I love your content. I've been watching you and Frankie and Pip since, like, 2020. And when I found out Uncle Jordy was doing a YouTube video with you, I was like, no way. So I just want to say hi, and that's... I love the dogs, and I just love being able to relate to someone because you get like FFA and stuff. And me too, me too. So, anyways, love the content. Keep up the good work. 
Bye. Sorry, I had to do that. that incredibly, I promised her. Incredibly nice. I appreciate oh, yeah, it. Can, can, can no, I ask you no something problem. about that? How does it, how, 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 that that's got to be pretty mind blowing when you get like people like that. Oh, dude, it's every yeah. Style. If I see someone in real life who knows who I am, I'm just like I sit there and start fucking talking to them because I'm like, what's up? Oh, really? Like, yeah, I'm like, what's your yeah. name? And then they'll just be like, and they do, they always get like super like weird, I guess, because it's just bizarre to see. I'm in a very small town, um, but I just I mean, yeah, I, I love that. That's like my favorite part of all yeah, this. Yeah. Yeah. It happened once. It happened to me once in London, and they just asked about Keemstar. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah no, tell, tell her. I, uh, I mean, yeah. Well, uh, that's the. What's her I, name? Mudar was supposed to ask you to do a video for her for her birthday. I don't know if you ever got around to doing that. I don't think I don't think he asked me. Yeah, I don't think so either. Because like, yeah, I, he's I, a busy dude. I, I asked Mudar if he could make a thirty second video to like say happy birthday to her and stuff. Because she. When's loves her birthday? Her. her birthday is in a month. Oh, yeah, I can do that. Yeah, yeah. sure. Yeah, that's Why awesome, not? man. You're a good guy. Yeah, you I know, I hate there. to say this, because uh, I, but I, I generally was a fan of you coming into this, and, and I, hate I, you now. I, I think I, yeah, I can hate you now. No, I think, <laughs> I think my perception of you was pretty accurate. I think you might genuinely be a, right. a well-meaning uh, person, and uh, that's I actually agree. Kind of I, rare I, I totally agree. in in the current landscape. I'm very surprised by that. I hate YouTubers. This guy's okay. Dude, but then again, I, I, I as soon as I cannot do this ever again, I will. I'm in the same boat. Yeah. I'm out. I'm piacing out, dude. Do you not? Do you not like it? See, I actually like it. Do, I, I do. do like I, like I, I I do love it. But there are mm -hmm. so I have a list, uh, a book full of things that I love more. Yeah, well, I, fair I, enough. I, yeah, I respect. That. I loved the job love for a really long time. People off, and There's I'm actually learning to love this happier. podcast. Not, nothing so makes me happier than pissing people off, especially the right people. If you know what I mean, <laughs> that's. That, I don't think anybody anything could. Besides, I, I wish I could. I wish I was young enough to go back in the army and do that whole thing again because it's such a blast. But um, I, since I can't, I think pissing people off that are making much more money than me will do. You know. And you want to close it with anything, Umbaville? I I'm actually really impressed. I really appreciate coming on, and it's just it's nice to see. Um, it's it's nice to see somebody successful. To use I thought we have more very much grounded vitriol. Yeah, do you guys got any other? I mean, I don't. I don't got. No, I think I'm done. No, here. no man. I guys. I just want to say really thank you for coming on. I was really surprised you. you did it. Um, I do have one big question for you. Yeah, actually. Okay. Knowing how detached you are from the work, knowing how detached you are from the YouTube community, in regards that you have a healthy non I don't know what you would call it, uh, uh, a healthy outside life outside of the internet. Out of all the videos you've done, out of all the topics you've covered, has there ever been anybody that, like, when you walked away from, genuinely, it pissed you off, you're so hurt, so upset by what they were f***ing doing? Is there somebody out there that just, like, is stuck in your brain? Um, I don't know. I don't think so. There's nobody that I, like, and, and to be clear, too, I'm detached from it, but I'm also incredibly grateful for it. Just to be yeah, just to course, be clear, yeah. like I I do have respect for the people that watch my videos and who you know who are compelled like and who interact on the internet like truly. Uh, but no, no, I don't. I don't think anybody uh, really. To be honest, I don't really care. I don't. I say I don't really care that much all the time, and people get mad whenever I say that. But I really, I just really don't care that much. <laughs> I'm glad. I, I genuinely think, and it, it, specifically when you hinted at you know growing up somewhere on, on on a spectrum and having to teach empathy to yourself and and learn these things now, I think it's kind of amazing. You are probably a fairly solid example of what a YouTuber should be. Probably should be, yeah. Yeah, and <laughs> uh, it it kind of rocks. I do look forward to you getting canceled one day, and uh, I will because you. <laughs> actually Me shot too. somebody in the skull you or whatever you know goody two shoes <laughs> yeah, dude, I, I, I feel like i'm not a goody two shoes that's i don't that's i literally I never can't wait what do you think wings i think that uh you're going to end up shooting somebody <laughs> you think so? it's going to be good. one of those things where it's like oh well, i picked a gun up off the floor and it was it happened to be loaded Ooh, <laughs> hopefully not an nd Woo. Ooh. hopefully it's like you know People trying to steal my my food stores and the world is shut down or something like that. <laughs> all right, everybody. From, if it comes to that. All right, everybody. From Boogie Wings and Oompa Bill, thank you so much for being on. And the world's gayest vape. See, it's got lights. We'll see you next time. Love, Cal Live.